All right, you guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. We have a very special guest today, Cameron Sorsby, and I'm super excited to interview him. He is the current CEO of Praxis. So Cameron, let's dig in and just like, let's talk about you first. Like, who are you? Why, are, why am I interviewing right. you in the first place awesome. in the homeschool podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So uh, I think the direct answer to that is because of what I do at Praxis, it's a college alternative program for, for young entrepreneurs that want to take a, a different path. Almost 40% of our participants have a homeschool background. So they've been a really good fit and we've built up really awesome audience and community in, in the homeschool network and stuff. But, you know, a little bit about me, just kind of how I got to where I am. Um, you know, growing up, I was not the biggest. I, I did traditional private and public K through 12. I never enjoyed a classroom setting, but I loved to learn. And I always had like frustrations with school myself. And, and then the other big thing growing up was like, I love to play sports and it was like hyper competitive. And so I'd rather just be reading a book on my own or out on a field somewhere playing. Uh, but I was told I had to be, you know, stuck, stuck inside for eight hours a day following a curriculum. I didn't, didn't really understand why it was valuable and stuff. So, uh, and then from there, you know, also did traditional college kind of begrudgingly. And then right at the end of college, I found, I really discovered Praxis. I was interning for our founder, Isaac Morehouse, for the previous job. And it was kind of the year before he started Praxis. And he was talking to me about it. And I was just super excited about it, knew it was a big idea and wanted to be involved any way I could. So long story short, graduated college, got, got some good early work experience, got to move to a new city. At the same time, I was keeping in touch with what Praxis was doing. Uh, ended up joining the very first class myself as a participant and uh, kind of snuck my way onto the team after that and uh, have been excited, excitedly uh, building it since then. That's awesome. So what year did Praxis begin? So the, the very first class was February 2014. Okay. That's exciting. So you were right in there in that first class. And what was your experience of that? Because it's a year program. Was it a year program back then as well? It was, it was 10 months back then. And, and it, it worked a little bit differently, but you know, the core principles are, are all pretty much the same. So I did that. I actually already had a job um, right out of college. So I kind of used that job as like my apprenticeship through the program. And then I really took advantage of like the actual curriculum that was that was part of the program back then. And I I did it for both reasons. Like as I mentioned, you know, I never really enjoyed school. And Praxis for me was it felt like the first like formal education program that I was choosing to do myself. And I was really excited about that. And I felt like it provided so much that that I didn't get out of college for myself. So tell me a little bit about how Praxis was created. So you call that an alternative to college. So why did they feel a need to create an alternative to college in the first place? Yeah, so the, the founding team, it was, we really saw two problems on both sides of the market. So our, our early team, we had a background in, in working with like high quality driven young people that were at that high school and college age. And we started to see this trend of they were becoming less and less satisfied with, with their own college experience, both from like the more practical standpoint of, hey, like it's becoming more expensive. I, you know, I don't know if it's worth taking all this on all this student debt. It's not really setting me up for a fulfilling career. And it feels like when I graduate, I'm starting from square one as far as like, being on the job market and stuff. But I think on, those are usually the like popular arguments against college is like, it's becoming really expensive. It's not preparing you for the job market. I think the the earliest thing we saw though was just from a, an educational and like intellectual perspective, we were around a lot of like very smart, 
driven young people and they were bored with their college experience. It, you know, you, you go into classes and I, I know this was my feeling myself. Like there's kids in their pajamas that are hung over and they're not engaged in the classroom. They're there to get the piece of paper that they feel they need to get to get started. And so it's a mixed bag of, of who you're around. And for my own experience, it was all those little things that I took initiative to do outside of a classroom setting when I was in college that I, I look back on and, and I, that's the most valuable aspect of it. So the work experience I got, the you know small groups of people that I built relationships with around like I, learning and ideas outside of the classroom that was the fun part of college for me and I think we we saw that as a team it was like okay you can have all of that without all the other things that make college really expensive and and not as satisfying and then on the on the hiring side um, you know our team was also working with you know, successful entrepreneurs that were building businesses and we were getting feedback from them of, I'm always looking for good talent. It's really hard to find, you know, especially that young entry level talent. It's, they're not coming into the job market prepared. So that's, I've heard some, I know some of my friends whose husbands are work in a company where they are hiring a lot of those entry level college educated people. And they feel like they're really good at taking um, direction but they're not great at taking yeah. initiative. So is yes. that what you find with Praxis is that a lot of kids who go through the Praxis program, are they more self-motivated? Uh, like what's kind of the difference of that aspect? Sure, so we, I think that's something we, we definitely look for in, in applicants to the program is you need to be more of a self-starter a little bit more entrepreneurial and like the types of things that we look for are, Hey, like, do you have above average work experience for an 18, 19, 20 year old? Mm -hmm. And do you, can you tell good stories about that work experience? Like if you go wait tables for a year or two and you don't have to be great at it when you start, that's the whole point of getting the experience, but you can see that someone's grown from that and they can tell good stories about that experience. That's always a really good sign for us. Um, and really we look for those things like, what are you doing outside of the classroom that you're actually taking initiative on? So uh, we almost joke about it. There's, there's, two, there's a few things that if we see uh, a new applicant has this in their background, they're probably gonna be a good fit. One is like, if you ran some type of small business yourself, like yeah. the person who was doing lawn care service in their neighborhood, that's always, that's always a really cool thing to see. Or somebody that, hey, I'm gonna, I'm going to set up some type of like pretty basic e-commerce website or something. And then the other one is like, if someone worked at Chick-fil-A while they were a teen, it's like guaranteed they're going to be a good fit. But, um, you know, they just, they just have that really good professional experience to work on, but it's, you don't have to have it completely. And it's something that the program really, I think emphasizes the program is less about building a specific skill like all right learning how to code or or sales or marketing like we do a little bit of everything it's really more about like okay what does it mean to be a strong entrepreneurial young professional and whether you have your eye you know whether you're set on maybe like owning your own business at some point in the future or if you don't really see yourself as an entrepreneur in that way but you want to work at cool companies and have cool jobs and, and be someone that's going to look at their professional life more than just like a nine to five. I'm going to check in and check out. It's really about taking that initiative. And we, the program's kind of set up to, to get you ready to do that going into the job placement that you get. And we, we have a kind of an internal joke is we call it like a de-schooling period. Yeah. Um, and we, we find this with some homeschoolers too. I was going to say, we actually have a whole episode on de-schooling. <laughs> oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's really just about getting rid of those like permission-based habits and mm -hmm. mindset. And it's about taking on like a value creation mindset. You, you know, as, as a, a young employee, your job is to add value to your business's customers and to the business itself. 
And by doing that, like that's the best way to learn new skills and, and learn what you like to do and what you maybe don't like to do. But the, you need to have that mindset. You need to put in the effort. And that's something we look for in applicants. And it's something we, we really emphasize in the program too. So this is definitely for somebody more of an entrepreneur type mindset, right? If so, like my oldest son loves a nine to five, like he, he, when we, he just graduated this year from high school. Right. And uh, I guess high yeah. school, homeschool, high school, but uh, yeah. he like his dream job. He goes, I know when I want to go in and I want to know when I'm going to leave. So like that would not be the, the right type of candidate. Right. Um, I, I actually, I don't think it's necessarily like, black or white on, okay. on those terms it's it's a couple things one is like we're not trying to develop doctors or lawyers because yeah. there's just legal licensing around all that of course like i think the first thing is like the types of opportunities you, you get and the types of things we kind of prepare you for are anybody that's like generally interested in in business and and or they don't know what they want to do yet and they want to find that out through more of like a discovery process instead of like okay i need to determine i'm going to be a lawyer now because that requires four years of an undergrad and then go to law school and then you know see what happens um you know i think what's really cool is it does have flexibility for like how you how do you want to set up your life long term you know we have some participants that like i mentioned like they they are going to be like the next generation of business owners mm -hmm. and and stuff and they probably see that more in the terms of like their life calling is yeah. to find find what they're most passionate about and and then there's other people that are like hey i want to go work at tech startups it's a more intensive environment and i love being in that environment and i want my life to kind of work around my my, my work and my professional life um, but we've also had a lot of successful participants, you know, two, three years out of the program, they're focused on building a professional life through like freelancing and remote work that allows them to travel and just like make time for, for other things in their life. Maybe they're, they have a stronger preference for like a work life balance and things like that. I, I, I think the determining factor is anyone that wants to be very intentional about their professional life and and go about it and and that's not like i don't think practice is for everyone it it does require somebody that's going to like be more self-directed that's probably the biggest thing and and mm -hmm. put in the work and and kind of take take more control over your own life like of course you can go to college you can do other programs that are like okay if i just follow the the roadmap in front of me then I'll probably be in a pretty good spot at the end of the day. But if you're more excited about seeing what you can kind of do on your own, I think that's, that's kind of what we look for. Yeah, that's awesome. So I found about pra out about practice years ago. I can't even remember exactly when. And um, yeah. TK, is he still a part of it, right? He yeah. Was on a podcast episode of Tom Woods. And my yep. husband's like, you have got to listen to this guy. He is so funny, so exciting. So I listened to it and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then Derek, who I contacted, who contacted you, he actually came to Utah and yep. did a whole presentation for homeschoolers. And uh, it was really exciting and really cool. And at the time there was actually a youth program that my son participated in. And I didn't see that if you guys still do anything like oh. that. Was that the teen entrepreneurship course? Yes. If you remember. Yes. Yeah. So that's not active right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we wanted to like focus on making the program as strong as possible and things like that. But we, we've actually probably every week we get a handful of um, inquiries into like, Hey, like my son is 15, my daughter's 14. I think they're going to be a great fit for Praxis. What can they do now? So if not by the end of this year, then early 2021, we'll definitely be doing something in the teen space again. Okay, because it was really cool. He's actually a musician. So I have five boys, right? oh, so awesome. one of my sons. And uh, so I think they were teaching him how to market himself as a musician, right? Then how to do all that stuff. So it was really, it was a neat mm -hmm. experience for him. Yep. Um, so let's talk about your experience a little bit with Praxis too. Of what was, like, what were some of the areas you felt like you grew the most in? with participating in the program 
Yeah, so the program itself, the the biggest thing that I took away, one, we the curriculum back then, you know, pairing up like your actual job experience that you're getting through the program, it was it was like a very broad generalist like interdisciplinary curriculum. So we had a philosophy module, we had a history and culture module, we had an economics module, and then we had like a business module. And the philosophy and history modules were actually my favorite. And compare, like I was a philosophy minor in college and that month of going through the Praxis philosophy module, like that was the best stuff I had been consuming. Uh, I was super excited about it. And it was kind of, it was set up for like, what's the ideal curriculum for somebody that's more entrepreneurial? So you were learning philosophy a little bit through the lens of like from business and, and entrepreneurship and stuff. But the biggest thing I took away was, I think it really sharpened my, my critical thinking and my creative skills, really. Um, we had, you know, it was kind of easy in a classroom setting just to kind of learn to the test and like you kind of figure out how to um, just like, okay, what's the bare minimum I need to do in order to get a good grade as opposed yeah. to like, okay, what do I wanna learn you know, at this period of time. So it, it allowed me to just like take more initiative really over that. And then I was able to like take the things I was learning like in a philosophy module and it was sharpening my critical thinking skills. And I could, I could see the impact like in the work I was doing at the job I had. Um, I think it, it, made, it made me a little bit more entrepreneurial and just like how I approach problem solving and stuff, which, which is probably the coolest part. Yeah, that's really neat. What was, I've been curious, what was the hardest part? Like, did you ever think, what am I doing? Like, should I, I already have a college degree. Why am I bothering with another program? Like, what was the hardest yeah. part for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I was going in, I was super excited about it. And like, I could see like, okay, I want to turn this into an experience so I could leverage it into, you know, joining the team at some point. But I think the hardest part was, it was like, there was no set schedule. I didn't show up to class. It was, okay, I have 20 hours of content that I need to consume and like really learn over a two week period. I have to, I have to set my own calendar. I have to stick to it. And, and that like self-discipline of it all was, was probably the toughest part because I'm, I'm sure there were periods. There were definitely periods where I'm sure I was a little bit of a slacker. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's with homeschooling too. That's one of the things that like, uh, so I have a co-host and we just, when we interview, we do singles, but uh, one of the things that yeah. we like to give kids around third and fourth grade is to really mentor them to become an independent learner. So by the time that they're 14, right. 15, 16, that they've taken that initiative of like, this is what I love. This is what I want to study. And so Praxis then to me yeah. seems like it's just a continuation of that mindset. Yeah. I, I think it's it's applying that approach and mindset to like your professional life specifically and mm -hmm. like okay I so much and that's why like homeschoolers are such a good fit for the program is they they have that like they tend to be more mature than their peers and they tend to be more self-driven those are probably the two things that stand out um, and they're just like polite and fun people to be around. Um, <laughs> they're like, do we pray but, over everything? <laughs> or maybe you have a more diverse group of homeschoolers. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but I think in, yeah, we get them from, from all over and stuff. But um, when it, applying those skills to your job, that allows you to think more entrepreneurially, entrepreneurially like, okay, I'm doing sales and there's, let's say like, okay, there's a clear script to follow with like, hey, here are the emails, here's what I'm supposed to say on phone calls with, with prospects and stuff. And it's like, okay, in a traditional school, school mindset, it's like, I'm just gonna follow what, I, what I've been told to do by my supervisor and manager. And like, this, this is how it's always been done here in, in that mindset versus someone who always, already has like stronger self-directed skills they're going to take that and they're going to use it as like a foundation. And then they're going to actually approach as like, okay, how can I make this better? And it's like, okay, I'm getting this response over and over from a prospect and I need to figure out how to overcome like their, these common objections. I need to get creative 
and, and solve this problem on my own. Or it's like, Hey, I'm in marketing and okay. I understand like I'm, I'm capable of doing like the basic tasks as part of this job, but I'm ambitious. I want to, you know, I want to advance. I want to grow in my career. You need to be able to learn all those skills on your own. And, and I think that's the secret. Like once you're out of school and in the real world, everybody has to do that. So the, the earlier, the younger you are to learn those things, you're going to have an advantage. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the program. I know it's a 12 month program. And as I was looking more into it, it looks like it's broken up into two, six month ish chunks. So is that correct? Yes. Okay. So tell me, tell us what those two yep. chunks look like. Yep. So the first six months, a participant is going through our boot camp and they're going through our job placement process. So you end that six months, that's when we place you into a full-time job. And then for the second six months, we are supporting you in that job, making sure that not only are you like settling in, but you know, that, that first six months as a young professional are probably the most crucial just to get up to speed. And, and that's kind of what we focus on there as, as well as like, okay, we're not, you're not going to have this job forever. And you probably won't have this specific job for more than a year. If that, like you're either going to be growing with this company or you're going to be looking at what else you want to do. And so we kind of focus on like, okay, what do you, how can we help you set up for success after the program? Um, but yeah, the, the first six months are really cool. It's very project based. They go through uh, like three to four months of different modules to learn specific skills, get to figure out like, okay, what areas, what types of job opportunities could I, could I land through the program itself? And what, what would I be a good fit for based on my existing skills and interests? And then the last two to three months of that boot camp process are focused on like the actual job hunting to land that role. Okay. And the first six months you do it from your own home, correct? Yes, that's, it's completely remote. It's, it's about a 10 to 15 hour time commitment a week. And then on Monday and Wednesday nights, we have live workshops that you attend and then everything else like you're doing on your own time with the support of advisors and, and other participants that are going through the program at the same time. So, and then the last six months you would possibly relocate, correct? Yes. So probably nine out of 10 are relocating for their job experience. Um, but especially, I mean, this was a trend that was happening before COVID, but especially with COVID, there's probably like 25 to 30% of our job opportunities are, are remote at this point. So some okay. people, they land remote jobs and then they get to choose like, hey, maybe you want to go move to a city of your choice and, and kind of get started. Some people like to stay closer to home. We, we like when participants and applicants are eager to move um, because I think that that shows like, okay, this person wants to like go and set up a life of their own. And like some participants, they'll go move for one to two years through the program. And then they figure out like, okay, like I want to end up, you know, maybe in my hometown or somewhere else long-term. And now I can go do that and stuff. But I think it's really valuable to get that experience. So what kind living of, in a, a new environment? That's really neat. So what kind of spectrum of jobs um, are your participants? It, like, are they all techie jobs or are they like, what does that look like? Yeah. So we work, the types of companies that we work with tend to be tech startups or other like growing small businesses that are looking for like entry level business talent. So almost none of our participants are going into like coding or software engineering. They're going into like sales, marketing, customer support, operation roles. And that those have been really good fits for the type of person who Praxis tends to be a good fit for. If you're, you know, if you're sharp, you're hardworking, you have good character, you have good communication skills, we can very much work with that. Like, train, polish you up on some basic professional skills and in, in these like different role areas like sales or marketing. And you can learn what you need to learn on the job. 
like that's that's where most of the lower like the hard skill learning is going to happen and it's more like companies want they they're less for these types of roles they're not worried about like okay has this person done this job before it's more about like do they have the soft skills and intangibles that i would want from a new new employee so when they go to this job is it an internship or is it a paid position for that six month period it they're yeah so they're they're full-time you know 40 hours a week and they're they're paid so our minimum salary that someone's making in their placement is thirty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. uh, um and the average salary after six months is is closer to fifty thousand um but the the idea is to find an initial opportunity at a growing company that you can go in and prove yourself and if it ends up being a good fit like you enjoy working there and you know you're a valuable employee for them we want to put you in a position where of course you can keep working with that company so the companies we work with they're looking for full-time talent they don't see this as just like a three-month or six-month internship you're here um, maybe you're somewhat helpful maybe maybe not so much and then you're gone they're you know they're very serious and committed and invested in you and they want to see you grow and it's less about the specific type of industry that the company's in and it's more about does their culture align with like the praxis culture like we want to work with companies that kind of take a similar approach to their young talent that we do um and they're looking for people that have those soft skills have a lot of potential but maybe on the greener side experience wise and but they can you know they want to train you in their own ways and they almost prefer to work with praxis because they you know they're getting new hires that are like a blank slate yeah. and then they get to kind of mold you into like a really good fit for their own company and stuff that's neat so tell me a little bit about the application process if somebody's like okay this sounds really awesome like maybe i'm eight do you have to be 18 like what does that look like yeah so there's no one there's no like strict age limit you know we i'd I'd say most people, it's probably good to be 18, especially like, hey, you're going to be moving and yeah. finding housing and, and things like that. But we've we've had, you know, some some 17 year olds, even even a couple 16 year olds start the program. But the application process, it, it's it's very simple. Um, we we know what we're looking for, and we want to kind of figure out if you're a good fit as soon as we can. So, the the actual application process, there's an initial application. There's a few like short, short answer essays that are like, hey, why are you excited about Praxis? Tell me about, you know, some of the projects or work experience you've worked on. What do you want to get out of the program? And, and that's to one, like we just want to get to know like, hey, how are your writing skills? That's a, that's a really big thing that we look for. If, if you have above average communication skills, verbal and written, then, then we can usually work with you. Um, but the other thing is like, we want to know that you've done your research on the program and like you know what you're potentially signing up for so you know the website's really informative you can talk to team members you can really get a good feel for for the program itself and then from there it's it's two interviews with team members and in those interviews we're really just getting to know your experiences and what your background is. And, and again, it's like all those like soft skills and intangibles that we're really trying to, to identify and make sure you're a good fit. And there's little things that you can do during the application process that really set us set you apart, um, asking good questions. So like you should be interviewing us as much as we're interviewing you and follow up with thank you emails. That's, that's a huge thing. Like, like nine times out of 10, if, if an applicant is, is following up, that's that's a good sign because not everybody does that it's it's actually still amazing to me um that more people don't do that in in different settings and stuff but that's that's really the big thing and i think the other cool part of the application process is we we regularly accept reapplicants re that have gone through the application process one or two times in the past and if you make it to you know kind of our our final stages and you don't get in 
then we want to give you feedback and like we we make it very available and accessible to to get that feedback and hey we'll give you like okay you were close but maybe you're just slightly inexperienced or a little bit younger it'd be really valuable for you to get three to six months of work experience and then hey we'd love to see you reapply or maybe there's just a few things that you slipped up on and you can apply you know sooner and later or you know every once in a while we'll get really eager um younger applicants that are 15 16 and they can't help themselves or they're, they're uh, super excited to get going which is like okay you're you're going to be a good fit but you just gotta gotta wait a year or two yeah so do you cap off how many people are allowed in the program at a time yes yeah, so right now we our cohorts we run them two months two months on and then one month off and those cohorts are typically capped at 12 to 15 participants. And we do that for two reasons. Um, one is that just allows us to control the, the quality of the program experience for the participants themselves, because it's, it's relatively hands-on. You know, you have program advisors and coaches that are working with you throughout the boot camp, throughout the placement process and everything. And we definitely have big, you know, big plans to keep growing the program, but we're, we're going to focus on like growing gradually to make sure that the pro the quality of the program experience really remains at a high level as we do that. So what's your acceptance rate? Like how many applicants do you guys have to turn around with turn away? Yeah, the, the acceptance rate is, it stays anywhere from 10 to 15% any okay. month and and you know it so like there are times where somebody will go on like a fox news appearance and then we just get tons of applicants but yeah. it, they're not you know necessarily the best fit or they don't even know necessarily what they're signing up for so that that can take it even lower but for people that are like sincerely a, really potentially a fit for the program it's it's about 12 to 15 and that's again like we look for all those kind of soft skills and stuff and you know unfortunately school doesn't doesn't necessarily prepare everybody to have those and and i also think the again a big advantage for for a teenager is start start getting work experience as as soon as possible um you know go go work at mcdonald's go bus tables um you know go like if you can find more in like what would be interesting and work to you, of course, pursue that. But there's something really valuable about those like service and retail jobs that I think really prepare you for really valuable, you know, kind of like more career oriented opportunities and stuff. So um, that's something, you know, I, I started just doing like soccer camps and, and training when I was 13, 14, 15. And it was so, it was really intimidating and scary at first, but once you start doing it, then it's like you you start to love to work, and uh, um, that's also always a good sign if if uh, applicants saying saying things like that, like, "Hey, I work at the grocery store. I check bags, and it's like I figured out how to make you know the checkout process even more efficient, or like the layout of the of the floor plan, or or you know something like that." That's always really cool to hear. So as far as like homeschoolers, let's say that you have a group of people are listening and they're saying like, yes, I have a kid that this speaks to them. So like, how do I help their school yeah. become like on the road to praxis? Is it having them get a job? Is it like, what are the skills like a mom could be doing to prepare their kid who maybe wants that path? Yeah. So one, I would, I would always encourage someone to go to our website and, and reach out to the team. And we're always happy to have, have phone calls with um, families and younger, younger individuals that are interested in Praxis in the future. And our team is really good at like giving like specific advice of like, okay, you're 14, 15, whether you do Praxis or not, like here are some things you can get started on. And, and I think probably two, two things stand out. One is like, go get work experience. I think that's never a bad thing to do. Yeah. Um, that's really, really valuable. It helps you. I think the biggest thing is it helps you figure out like, 
what you don't like and what you do like in terms of in terms of work and like what you're good at and what are the things that you want to improve on? What are the things that like, eh, maybe this isn't for me at all. Um, it's really, really valuable, like self-knowledge. And then I think just do, do side projects that are of interest to you. So like, if you, if you're really passionate about music, like one, like, play music and learn instruments and, and start a band and, you know, whatever it is to like actually do that thing. But, you know, create, you know, start a personal website and start blogging about like music history or like the bands you're really into, like what makes this song good over another, like being, being a curious individual and then like applying that to like things you can create on your own. I think that's, that's probably the biggest piece of advice I would give anybody, whether they're interested in practice or not. That's, that's how you're going to learn what you're interested in and, and what you're not interested in. That's really awesome. So your website is discoverpraxis.com, correct? Yes. And so is that where the best place for people to go to find out more about the school or any yep. questions they would have? Yes, that's uh, that's the best program. That's the best place to uh, just like learn more about the program. If you're interested in getting in touch with our team, there's like a live chat on the website, but you can also email info at discoveredpraxis.com. Awesome. Do you have anything else you want to share before I let you go? That's that's all, Megan. I had fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on and telling us all about an alternative to college. You bet. All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye.